instead of dumping them in the landfills or in the soil as such because plastics will not degrade so any chemical that enters into the environment polluting it altering it or contaminating it it is called as chemical pollution the mercury in waste water which is released by paper industries they can also react inside the bacteria Hello everyone a warm welcome to today's session on environmental studies for second semester BBA I'm Dr Divya environmental studies faculty Vidyashram first grade college temple of excellence Mysore so in today's session let us continue with studying unit 5 that is environmental pollution so in this session let us concentrate on soil pollution and chemical pollution and also noise pollution in the previous session we had discussed about water and air pollution so talking about soil pollution so what is the soil pollution so soil pollution refers to any contamination or any kind of alteration that occurs in the soil because of anomalous concentration of toxic substances so other than the natural substances that need to be present in the soil in order to maintain the ph of the soil and also to promote growth of the plants apart from that if any contaminating substance such as toxic chemicals or heavy metals if all that are present then we consider the soil to be polluted so moving further let us study what are the different causes of soil pollution so the main cause of soil pollution is industrial activity so industries we know they dump a lot of sewage into the nearby rivers and ponds etc right but apart from that some of the waste from the industries are dumped into landfills which when heavy rains come they can spread and they can enter or leach deep into the soil causing contamination of the soil so in the, a lot of chemical industries are there which release some toxic substances which can cause pollution to the soil next is because of agricultural activities so nowadays we don't prefer organic farming like the earlier times right so earlier times the farmers used to use cow dung or natural manure in order to grow crops because the availability of synthetic form of fertilizers or any sort of chemicals was not available but today in order to gain money in order to improve the economy in order to provide excess food to the growing population people have started depending on chemical fertilizers to on a larger extent in order to grow the plants properly therefore they can get more num amount of yield when compared to that of organic farming and also they can with a very short span of time they can cure the plant of diseases or prevent the occurrence of diseases in plants therefore increasing the yield of the plant but we never think what effects these chemicals are posing on to the environment so these chemicals can leach into the soil along with water and it can contaminate the soil and moreover in the soil whatever good microbes are there which is needed for maintaining the ph of the soil maintaining the fertility of the soil and all that such microbes will be lost because of these agricultural activities wherein a lot of chemicals are being used so therefore agricultural activities are also one of the major causes for soil pollution next is waste disposal so improper disposal of waste of course be it the household waste also if we take into consideration we cannot burn plastics because plastics if we burn that smoke can cause problem to humans animals as well as it can lead to a major change in the air quality also that's why instead of preferring to burn plastic so people just throw plastics because it is the easy way of disposal or be it any household chemicals like waste disposal like we are using some chemicals like detergents and all that so that also can enter into the soil through water so therefore these waste disposals especially the domestic waste that are there 
with without a knowledge itself they contaminate the soil so therefore these waste disposal or improper waste disposal is also one of the main reasons for the contamination of the soil of a soil pollution next is accidental oil spills so oil spills can also contaminate the soil we had studied that oil spills can contaminate the oceans that is the water right likewise the spillage of oil on the land can also contaminate the soil next is acid rain so acid rains can contaminate the soil how because acid rain contains a sulfur dioxide which when enters into the soil can kill the good microbes that are present in the soil therefore these microbes will not be capable of degrading the waste materials that are there in the soil and therefore leading to soil contamination or soil pollution next is because of mining activities so during mining activities also a lot of drilling process and all that is undertaken and during that process there are chances of a lot of toxic chemicals leaching into the soil that can contaminate the soil and next is cracked paint chips so we all know that paint especially it contains lead so that bright intense color if a paint or if any uh, material for example if it needs to get that bright intense shiny color then lead is actually added to that and lead is one of the most toxic chemical substances that is present in the planet which can lead to a lot of devastative effects so therefore the cracked paint chips that fall on the ground from the uh, houses and all that even they also can contaminate the soil so these are the different causes of soil pollution so there are various causes among which few of them the important ones i've just listed so next let's study the effects of soil pollution so soil pollution can have a major effect on the human health how humans we depend on the vegetables for a food right or crop plants for food so if the soil is contaminated with heavy metals there are a lot of chances that these heavy metals can be taken up by the plants as well wherein the heavy metals such as cadmium lead mercury they can get deposited in the plant body and when we human beings consume it it can cause a lot of ill effects on the human beings as well and not just that the soil pollution if the soil is polluted what happens it will kill the good microbes that are present in the soil which are very very important for the decomposition process now if all the microbes in that particular soil is lost then the decomposition will not take place therefore the improper rotting of the plants and the animal waste can cause a lot of diseases which can spread to humans so that is how the soil pollution can affect the human health and it can affect the growth of the plants as i told you say for example there is a farm land that is there nearby a industry so that farmer he would have he would be growing a good variety of crops but these industry people what they do is just near the farm land they'll start dumping the toxic chemicals onto the soil from the soil during the rains or during the seepage of water these chemicals will leach into the soil and it can reach the agricultural fields wherein the plants will uptake these toxic chemicals along with the good nutrients that are there in the soil so now that is how because of the uptake of toxic chemicals by these plants it can retard the growth of the plant or it can stunt the growth of the plant so therefore soil pollution can have a effect on the growth of the plants and it can decrease the fertility of the soil as well and it can produce toxic dust which so when there whenever there is a sandstorm or a soil particles get carried away which can form a toxic dust in the air also leading to a lot of problems so and also it can lead to acidification so acidification is nothing but soil actually has a particular ph in which it should be maintained so we have acidic soil basic soil and neutral soil so those soils which are having a ph range of less than 7 is considered to be acidic 
which is having more than 7 is considered to be basic and that with the 7 is considered to be neutral. So usually it is good for some plants if the soil is basic, for some plants if the soil is acidic, for some if it is neutral. So that is how the soil acidity is balanced depending on what type of crops we are growing there. But here what happens here is because of the toxic chemicals, the complete soil pH will get altered wherein the soil can become completely acidic and such acidic soil is not at all suitable for the growth of any kind of plant. So that is how the uh, soil pollution can alter the pH of the soil leading to acidification of the soil that is it can make the soil excessively acidic. Next is it can, un it can poison the underground water table because obviously Whatever you pour into the soil, simple, right? Just pour a uh, cup of water onto a soil, very soon the soil will absorb it. Now imagine along with this water, how very soon it can absorb the toxic chemicals also, right? So these toxic chemicals can get absorbed with the water and it can get stored in the underground water table that is there. Therefore, polluting the underground water table as well. Now, if it pollutes the underground water table, the nearby wells can get polluted, the bore wells can get polluted and when human beings uh, consume such water, a lot of health effects will be uh, seen in them, right? So, that is how underground water table poisoning can occur because of soil pollution. Next is, it can increase the salinity of the soil. The use of, especially the use of some of the agricultural fertilizers, that is the chemical fertilizers, can make the soil more saline and if the salt content in the soil increases, then it will affect the overall growth of the plant as well. So therefore, soil pollution can increase the salinity or the salt content in the soil. So next let's talk about the control measures of soil pollution. So first control measure is by reducing the use of chemical fertilizers. Switch over to organic farming instead of depending on chemical fertilizers. Organic farming of course may be the result that you get out of our organic farming takes a lot of time and you get instant results with chemical fertilizer. But think about the environment. So, if you are a nature lover, if you want the environment to be clean, then we can reduce the use of chemical fertilizers by switching over to organic farming. Next is by reforestation, afforestation. So, wherever the trees have been cut down or it is less, the reforestation that is the growing of the trees or which is also called as afforestation can be undertaken. So, because trees they are said to help in maintaining the quality of the soil. So, that is one of the reasons. So, next is recycle and reuse products, be it plastics, especially plastics. Instead of dumping them in the landfills or in the soil as such because plastics will not degrade. It may take thousands to thousands of years for the plastics to degrade. So, therefore, recycle and reusing the products is one of the best options that can be done here. And also we should avoid the use of microplastic. So when I say microplastic, the best uh, thing that we can do is, say for example, there is a milk packet. So just don't cut the milk packet. What we do, we cut the milk packet and that small piece that is there, we just throw it off. That piece cannot get recycled and without, and it is also not seen so that is why separating them is also not possible by the municipal workers right so what happens here they'll just wash get washed away in the drain and all that and they'll get accumulated in the oceans and the soils and all that so that is why minimize the use of microplastics as well whenever you cut something when you whenever you cut a carton or a milk packet or something just see that that small bit that is there is left over in the plastic itself so that it can go into recycle and reusing. Next is use of natural manure. Natural manure we have that is cow dung that is there or the gober that can be used for agriculture purposes and also vermicompost. So vermicompost is nothing but that is got from earthworms. So the um, earthworms once they start feeding on the uh, dead plants and all that they will 
excrete. So that excreta is mixed with soil and it is made into a compost. So that compost is a natural compost which can be used in the agricultural field. So therefore use of natural manure can also control soil pollution. So next moving on to chemical pollution. So let's understand what is chemical pollution. So chemical pollution refers to the contamination of our environment with chemicals that are not found there naturally. So any chemical that enters into the environment polluting it, altering it or contaminating it, it is called as chemical pollution. So what are the causes of chemical pollution? Let's look into. So the chemical pollution can be mainly caused by organic chemical pollutants and inorganic chemical pollutants. So talking about organic chemical pollutants. So crude oil and petroleum, they are organic. They are got, they are got naturally from the earth, right? So crude oil and petroleum refined products such as we have gasoline, then diesel, then kerosene, mineral spirit, motor oil, lubricating oil. All these are the organic chemical pollutants which can cause chemical pollution. Next, some solvents which are used in industries or which are used in for laboratory purposes such as acetone, toluene, benzene, xylene, etc. They are used in many of the household products. Acetone, for example, nail polish removers. It is one of the major product in which acetone is used. And also to remove any paint or something, acetone is usually used for both industries and as well as household purposes. Even xylene and all that are used on the larger scale in industries and all that. So these solvents can also cause chemical pollution. Next is chlorinated solvents. So chlorinated solvents are the ones that are used as a cleaning agent in industries as well as in it is seen in many of the household products also and these are also some of the organic chemical pollutants. Next we have polyaromatic hydrocarbons. So these polyaromatic hydrocarbons are usually hydrocarbons. They are usually found in crude petroleum and petroleum products, crude oil etc. So these also are one of the examples of organic chemical pollutants. Next is alcohol. So when I say alcohol, it's not the alcohol that people consume, but I'm talking about the industrial alcohol that is ethanol, methanol, isopropanol, which are used in uh, many of the household products and also in industries. These can also cause chemical pollution. Next, we have trihalomethane, such as some of the chloroform, then dibromochloromethane, chlorobromomethane, bromoform, etc. And uh, these are some of the products which are used uh, for chlorination of water. So these also can cause chemical pollution. And plastic usage and disposing. Next, the use of pesticides, insecticides, herbicides. Herbicides are nothing but weedicides, which are used to kill weeds in the agricultural farms. So all these also contain tox some of the toxic organic chemicals that can cause chemical pollution. And also we have um, detergents such as nonyl phenol ethoxylate. So these detergents that is used for washing and all that, even they also, and some of the detergents also contain lipases. So even these also can cause chemical pollution. Next, some of the organometallic compounds such as organo arsenicals, organomercurials which are commonly used in pesticides, insecticides and herbicides that is for agricultural purposes even they also can cause chemical pollution. So these are the different organic chemical pollutants that are causing chemical pollution. Next talking about the inorganic chemical pollutants. So there are some metals and their salts which are usually got during the mining and the smelting process. They if disposed, if not disposed properly, then they can cause chemical pollution. And there are some inorganic fertilizers such as NPK that is nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, so nitrates, phosphates which are the chemical fertilizers which are especially used in gardening and agricultural activities. They also can cause chemical pollution. Next some of the sulphides that are there, especially pyrite which is a mined mineral and if once this pyrite is disposed into the environment, they 
generate sulfuric acid in the presence of precipitation of water. That is they mix with water and they form sulfuric acid which can have a deleterious effect on the environment. Next is ammonia. Ammonia is uh, used in many of the things like even in uh, dyes that is hair dyes and uh, a lot of products like um, for especially cosmetics when it comes to cosmetics like uh, for um, the bleaches. So for all that ammonia is used and ammonia is a poisonous gas that if released in larger amounts it can cause blindness followed by death as well. So therefore we have to be very very careful. But nowadays uh, you might have seen in the packets wherein they say ammonia free, shampoos ammonia free. But to what extent we don't know because we don't check, we don't have a laboratory at home, right? They uh, put something in the bottle, we just try to believe it. But ammonia is actually quite poisonous. The fumes of ammonia should not be inhaled to a, on a larger scale. And it's not possible to inhale it also because it is quite suffocating. So therefore, ammonia is also one of the chemical pollutants. Next, oxides of nitrogen and sulfur, which are one of the most common air pollutant. They are usually got from the emissions from vehicles and the emissions through industrial processes and also because of other human activities, they also can cause chemical pollution. And some of the acids and bases that are used in a lot of industrial purpose as well as in chemical laboratories, they are also one of the reasons for chemical pollution. Next, percolates such as perchloric acids and the various salts of these chloric acids which are used in uh, the manufacturing of rocket fuel, explosives, military operations, fireworks, road flares, inflation bags, etc. All these contain perchlorate. So this perchlorate is very, very dangerous because if it persists in the environment for a longer time, it can damage the thyroid functions in humans. So therefore, perchlorates are also one of the dangerous chemicals that cause chemical pollution. Next, talking about the effects of chemical pollution. So let's look into what are the effects of chemical pollution on soil, on air and on water. So let's study the effect of chemical pollution on soil. So the contamination of soil by fluoride and manganese they have an adverse effect on soil microorganisms and if soil microorganisms are affected it can affect the fertility of the soil and also if the fertility of the soil is affected then the crops will get affected and therefore the crops can also become unfit for human consumption. Next, chemical pollution in soil can be caused because of overuse of fertilizers, pesticides and herbicides, because of construction and demolition sites, because of mines, landfill, landfill etc. Therefore, these can cause quite a lot of effect on the soil which in turn can affect the human beings as well. So, let's know the effects of chemical pollutants on water. So, fluoride, manganese, barium, cadmium, antimony, etc. They are capable of contaminating both the surface water as well as the ground water. And the contamination of water usually results because of aerial spraying of chemicals on cultivated areas. So, a lot of chemical sprays, insecticides, pesticides, etc., are done on the agricultural fields and obviously a part of it will fall on the plant and the remaining that falls on the ground can cause chemical pollution because apart from falling onto the soil they also tend to move from soil to water contaminating the water as well. Say for example movement through drainage through surface runoff because of blowing of surface dust by effluents of chemical manufacturing plants all these can cause chemical pollution to water and there are a lot of pesticides and fertilizers which contain especially fertilizers which contain nitrates and phosphates that can cause chemical pollution of water. 
and nitrates if it enters into the fresh water bodies that is the drinking water they are quite hazardous or quite poisonous because they can enter into the bacteria's intestinal kennel or they can enter into the bacteria's intestine and in the bacteria's intestine they can convert them the nitrates get converted into nitrites which after reaching the blood stream of human beings it can destroy the oxygen carrying capacity of hemoglobin in the red blood corpuscle so we all know that a body there is blood present in a body which is made up of the RBCs and the WBCs and RBCs are very very important because they contain a protein called as hemoglobin or heme which carries oxygen from the lungs to different parts of the body. So if that itself gets affected because of drinking water that is contaminated by nitrite then it will decrease the oxygen carrying capacity of the hemoglobin in the RBCs and therefore causing a lot of respiratory related disorders and also some of the health issues. So these are the some of the effects of chemical pollutants on water and mercury in wastewater. So if you remember in the previous session I had given one of the best example of Minimata disease that had occurred in uh, Japan right. So just like that the mercury in wastewater which is released by paper industries they can also react inside the bacteria. So what happens to nitrate say for example in the previous slide I had used uh, the word nitrate right which is also a chemical fertilizer which is a component of the chemical fertilizer. So if these nitrate if it enters into the water the bacteria that is present in the water they will consume these nitrates. So when the into the gut of the bacteria when these nitrates enter the nitrates get converted into nitrites. And when human beings do not boil the water properly and directly consume this water then it will cause health effects in the human beings. Just like that similarly mercury also which is released into the water which is one of the toxic chemical pollutant that is released into the water it can react with the, with the bacteria that is present in the water and it can get converted into methyl mercury. Now this methyl mercury can enter into the fishes such as swordfish and they can cause severe health issues in people who ever consume these swordfish. And fluorides in water causes fluorosis in men and it can cause stomach ailments and also it can cause mental disorders and not just that fluoride in water especially in borel water it is said it will because of contamination it contains a lot of fluoride so fluoride in the borewell water also it can change the color of the teeth also and it can make the teeth more susceptible to breakage and all that and apart from that it can cause a lot of other ailments as well next manganese salts that are there they can cause eye blindness in human beings and fluoride and manganese salts together they can affect the growth and development of the plants as well. So these are the effects of the chemical pollutants if it contaminates the water. So next talking about how to control this chemical pollution. So chemical waste from industries before being let out or before being disposed it should be treated and always read the cover before you buy a product. So some of the products will contain a lot of chemicals especially when I talk about the shampoos, detergents and all that they contain sodium laurel sulphate which is not at all good for the environment. Therefore buying green environmentally friendly products and detergents should be our priority. Next whatever batteries are there instead of just throwing them as such it should be recycled so recycle batteries next use nature friendly cosmetics say for example there are some cosmetics which contain a lot of chemicals that knowingly or unknowingly it will enter into the drainage water it will reach the soil it will reach some of the water bodies causing chemical pollution therefore use nature friendly cosmetics 
which contain more amount of plant products rather than chemical products and using soaps, polishes or wipes that are truly environmental friendly. So any of the soaps that or detergents or polishes that is varnishing, paints, anything that is there, it is better to prefer environmentally friendly products. That is how we can control the chemical pollution. Next talking about the last form of pollution that is noise pollution. So what is noise pollution? Noise pollution is the unwanted or excessive sound that can have deleterious effect on the human health as well as wildlife and also it can affect the quality of the environment. So anything that is not good for the ear that is nothing but noise pollution. So there are a certain point or certain decibels which is sufficient for the ears and it is good for the ears. Beyond that it is nothing but noise pollution. So talking about the causes of noise pollution. So high intensity sound that is produced by machines in various industries, mills and factories they cause noise pollution and some of the agricultural machineries such as the thrashers. So in paddy fields and all wheat fee wheat after the harvest, thrashers are used to separate the hay and the grains. So, such thrashers can also cause noise pollution. Next is tube wells, power saw, then tractors, power tillers, harvesters. All these machineries that are used in the agricultural field during the harvesting time that can cause noise pollution. Next, domestic gadgets that are used in houses. The common ones such as pressure cookers, washing machines, mixer grinders, desert coolers, air conditioners, sieving machines, vacuum cleaners, all these can cause noise pollution. We might not feel irritated because we get used to the sound but actually they are all the pollutants of noise. And electrical devices such as radios, transistors, TVs, musical instruments, telephones, loudspeakers, etc. All these can cause noise pollution. And transportation is also one of the major causes of noise pollution and public addresses. That is, sometimes what happens uh, to, ed to uh, notify the people about the election, about uh, opening of a shop, about an offer somewhere, for all that, about a festival, for all that, loudspeakers are used wherein people roam around announcing in the mic, right? So all these can cause uh, noise pollution and also some of the alarm systems that can also can cause, cause noise pollution. That is, in industries, they use sirens which can be heard to kilometers together. So that can also cause, cause noise pollution. Then some of the social events like uh, worship places, parties, etc. are the major sources of noise pollution, then military tanks, explosions, shooting practices by the military, then military airplane training, rocket launching, all these also can contribute to noise pollution. Then some of the storms like hurricanes, cyclones, tornadoes, etc. They produce a high whooshing sound which is actually not good for the ears, especially for the older people and the in fans. So, they also can cause noise pollution and some of the construction work such as blasting, the crushing of stones, bulldozing, then welding, automobile repair activities, quarrying that is uh, using of dynamites to burst stones in the quarries. So, all that can also cause noise pollution. Next, talking about the effects of noise pollution. So, noise pollution can cause a lot of stress related illness and it can also cause high blood pressure. So overall I can say it can cause cardiovascular disease. They can cause cardiovascular diseases or problems to the heart in human beings because if the stress increases then the blood pressure also increases therefore leading to heart problems. Next, it can interfere with the speech or communication between people. 
it can cause hearing losses, it can disrupt the sleep of a person. So therefore, if sleep is disrupted, the next day the productivity of the person is also lost. It can cause lost productivity and it can also alter the feeding habits, reproductive patterns and migration routes or patterns and even cause hemorrhage that is blood clotting and death of whales, bats etc. Because whales, we know that they use sonic waves, right, in order to communicate. So, if that is not because of noise pollution, if that sonic waves cannot be used as a communication source by the whales, then migration, mating, feeding, everything will become a problem. Just like that for bats also because bats, they take up the echo, the vibration of the sound, that is what they take up in order to travel from one place to another. And in cities, it is not even possible for bats to travel at night because of the uh, sound produced by the vehicles and all that. So therefore, it can disrupt the overall behavior of the bat also. So therefore, it can cause effects on animals such as whales, bats, etc. Next, talking about control of noise pollution. So especially in industries and factories, we have to control noise pollution by setting industries and factories away from residential areas. And we have to plant more trees because it is said that more number of trees will lessen the sound. So therefore, plant more trees as they curb the noise. And in engines, especially in transportation engines, silencers should be used in vehicles, aircrafts, etc. Then stop honking too much unnecessarily while driving and running TV and radio at low volume using loudspeakers cautiously wherein the decibel of the sound should be maintained so that it is not a problem to the hearing. Next, avoid bursting crackers, turn off appliances or turn off appliances that are not in use. Next, uh, whoever is working in industries and all that, it is better to wear earplugs so that it will mask the sound and install soundproofing materials on the walls, on ceilings and even on the floor so that apart from that particular room, for example a party hall or something, the sound doesn't travel outside so that you don't cause a problem to other people. So all these can be followed to control noise pollution. So this was about this particular session wherein we studied about the soil pollution, we studied about the chemical pollution and also the noise pollution. In the next session, let us study about the nuclear hazards and the health risk it poses on the human beings. We will continue with this in the next coming session. So, I hope you understood the session well. So, we shall meet in the next coming session with these two topics. Thank you.